Hey, it's Trent. Fly low, don't die. Come be my wingman and join in the adventure. Now available in the Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace on PC and Xbox. What's up, everybody? How's it going today? You guys ready for some stole action over here at Oklahoma Stole with National East Stole? Well, the pilots are ready to go. They've been practicing since, I don't know, what, 6 o'clock this morning or something? These guys, I think Big Papa Polly was out here last night at like 4 a.m., so we're going to have a heated match today. Everybody's fighting for the season points. Let's see here, looking for the lineup real quick. Hold on a second, guys. All right, so we got uh, Victor Wasser, uh, number 94, and a 1956 Cessna 170B from Skaksau, Poland. I think I got that right. Uh, number 30, Lily Oshimi Flood, 1981 Cessna 152 from Leicester, Leicester, UK. Byron Bowman, number 75, and a 1954 Cessna 170B from Kentucky. And we have Frankie Poops. 1954 Cessna 170B from the great state of New York. All right, so the weather today is looking like we do have pretty good wind. Uh, I think it's about uh, 12 knots coming pretty much straight down the runway. And uh, we're out at uh, Patriot Air Park in Oklahoma, uh, uh, Oklahoma. It's just over the line of Arkansas. Um, so this is where uh, National Stoll is going to have a competition here in about, oh, I think about a month or so. And so we're going to test out the waters here first and, and see what our scenery developer did out here. You know, did a really good job on this one. So be sure to check out everything as we, uh, as we go through the night or the day. And the pilots are lining up now. Looks like we have, looks like Frankie's in the back of the pack lining up. And 
think that's Victor. Victor there first. Take a look at that livery, man. Gotta love Frankie Poops' livery. Oh, okay, that's Lily. I think that's Lily first. And Red Baron actually has a new livery out uh, for this competition. He's been working on it the last two weeks or so. So he's been painting up his 170B for the simulator. And it uh, looks like he did a real good job on it. So Victor, Victor Vosser, uh, he, I think he's gotten one first place so far, if I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think he won out at Swamp Stole, Swamp E Stole, and so we're going to be looking at quite a battle in the 170Bs today. I know, um, I think I heard Red Baron saying that uh, Victor wasn't, uh, ha hasn't had enough time to practice a lot lately, so... I think Red Baron, uh, with all the practice that he's put in, he might have a chance to pull a first place, but uh, Victor is a very, very hard contender to beat. Victor is actually a glider pilot as well, um, a real-life glider pilot. So, pretty unique to see some of the uh, some of the IRL pilots coming in here and doing the uh, doing the East Ole stuff. And you know, a lot of the goal with this is to you know introduce people to real-world aviation. You know, so we, we start start out in the sim. It's a little uh, a little easier, a little more forgiving to get started. But you know, once we get once we get people going, um, I'm hoping to see some of these guys in the uh, national stole competitions actually made it out to my first one at Swamp Stole um, and I'll tell you what I had a blast at the uh, at the in-person competition it was a lot of fun got to meet a lot of uh, cool pilots all of them are real real great people to talk to and hang out with Green flag, and we're going to get going here with uh, Victor Vosser taking off. He gets the uh, tailwheel up off the ground. It's that perfect balance. And wow, look at the balance. Look at the balance there. Now we do have a pretty heavy wind out here today. Seems to be almost 18 knots straight down the runway. And he pops those, those flaps and uh, shoots right up into the air. A lot of wind here today. I think the pilots are really going to enjoy uh, all the wind because it's going to lead to a lot shorter takeoffs and a lot shorter landings. And that's what we love to see at stole competitions. At least that's what I love to see. All right, we have Red Baron coming up. Byron Bowman from Kentucky, United States. Oh, wow. Yep, the wind is really, really whipping out here today. Somewhere around 
hundred feet or so on the takeoff, but we'll wait for the professionals. On the line, number 304, uh, Lily Yoshimi. And Lily Yoshimi is off. And wow, another, another uh, good, good takeoff there. And the 152 from Lily Yoshimi. Looks like we have uh, some kind of malfunction with him there. Oh, Frankie Poop's coming out hot. Wow, that might have been the best takeoff. From my point of view, that looked really, really nice. Frankie's going to kill it today. I heard him talking in the pilots group before the competition, and he told everybody to watch out because Frankie's coming out to uh, take some uh, gold today. Now, if you guys want to know why we call him Frankie Poops, his last name is actually uh, uh, has something to do with why he's called Frankie Poops. So it's not just uh, not just to be funny; it actually has uh, meaning. So I got a chance to uh, hang out with uh, pilots this weekend and uh, actually do one of the timed uh, timed uh, patterns around the runway. And I'll tell you what, it felt really, really cool to, uh, you know, be in that group of pilots that, you know, they, they have a plane going every 25 to 30 seconds or so. And I was able to, uh, I was able to actually nail my first one right on the money. Um, of course, I had a couple after that that weren't so great, but I don't compete in the competitions, but uh, it was fun to get into the pattern and actually uh, do the practice. Because anybody can come out and practice with you guys, by the way, if you uh, want to try it. Up into nationalskull.com slash chat to get all the details. Incoming is our first pilot to land here, number 94, or Wasser, the 170B. I imagine we're going to see some really, really short landings because of the wind. in a little low over the line gave up some on the line there gave up about 40 feet on the line it stopped though it was really big it stopped though and maybe, uh, maybe he actually only came over 20 feet it looks like he's close to the close to 80 feet or so it looks like and the crosser takes his plane out of the way so that way red baron Come in, another 170B out here. Now, if you're just tuning in, this is our first round of the touring class, and uh, so you're you're not too late. So stop in and uh, and hang out, guys. It's like uh, the wind is causing them to land a little over the line. You don't usually see these guys giving up anything on the line. This is the first round, so they're probably going to try to take it safe. There's four on the board. Sometimes that's the best way to do it when you're starting out in the first round. So if you don't know how we score, the score is not just the landing distance. It's not just how far you roll once your tires hit the ground. The score actually starts where the line starts. So if you land 20 feet over the line and then it takes you 30 feet to stop, score would actually be 50 feet they add that together so that's how they score the landings here just in case you didn't know and we have Frankie Poops number 36 from New York all right Frankie is coming in to take oh oh my gosh almost nose over almost he had the bricks hit real hard and he got it stopped. He was not joking around when he said he was coming in for the gold today. I think Frankie's going to have that lowest score for takeoff and landing.
Okay, so we do have one pilot out from disqualification. Willie is out for the round. So it's left to Byron, Victor, and Frankie. It looks like we have a total score for Byron on the first round, 210. Victor's got a 256. Frankie's score should be coming up soon. So Nice, nice short takeoff. It's going to be about 80 feet in the And guys, we have a special guest on today with us. Just like in real life, we have Justin Tisdale. If you guys don't know Justin Tisdale, he's Moose Dash Flyer. That's M O O S E Dash Flyer on all the socials. Make sure to go check him out. Like he might even be in his plane right now. And Byron Bowman takes off. Oh, really, really short. Right around that 80 foot line. Very controlled. Uh, once, he, once he gets up out of ground effect, very controlled flight. But they're, they're popping right up out of there today. It's pretty crazy to see that wind just 20 miles an hour blowing right at your face. And the Marlboro man, Frankie Poops, taking off. Number 36, he's ready to go. A little longer on the takeoff from Frankie. Very, very close between Byron and Frankie right now, though. Uh, so I thought Frankie had a little shorter than Byron, uh, but I actually didn't. Uh, that's why we leave that to Anoff to do the judging. I just read the numbers once I see them. But it uh, looks like Byron and Frankie are three feet apart right now, and Victor, the former champion from Swamp Stole, is not too far behind but about 43 feet behind second place and again lily is out for the round but red baron is in the lead at 210 frankie's at 213 and future is at 268 total short takeoff and a really short landing and coming around the bend Victor Vossler, number 94, in the Cessna 170B. Second round, it looked like he had about an 80-foot takeoff. We'll wait for the professionals to uh, bring the numbers in, as far as the judging goes. I can I can guess, though. Victor's going to pick up about 46 feet from his previous run to tie Red Baron. Take a look at these characters, guys. That That is actually Frankie. Uh, you just saw that flash go by the screen. It's actually Frankie and uh, uh, Frankie and uh, ADK. So it's pretty neat to see these characters. Our scenery creator did a really, really good job here. So he's bringing actual people, um, you know, the people that are flying here in the sim, he's bringing them in, putting them in, in the scenery. All right, gave up a little bit on the landing, but the stop was really, really good. Looking to be around 55 or so. That might bump him up. Now, with the wind being as heavy as, as it is today, yes, the wind helps, of course, but it does make it a little harder because we haven't had any competitions with this kind of wind. Um, so pilots may not be used to practicing in this kind of uh, wind. So when they're trying to land on those numbers, it may make it a little difficult for them for the first round here. And Red Baron, a little over the 100 foot line, not going to beat his previous score. Oh, Red Baron actually did scratch. He was just a little bit short of the line. I'm just getting that from the judges. So, Victor just, he did. He took, I, I suspected he did. He took the lead by quite a bit. So, not only did he bring that 46 feet, he said, I'm going to take another 55 and cleaned his act up by about 100 feet. Great job to Victor. And he's holding first place right now by 65 feet. Frankie's coming in, 
releases the flaps for a bit. Think he's having trouble with the wind. He may just pull around. Oh, okay. Okay. So he does choose to land. It's gonna be it's gonna be too long to, to bother with though. But at least he kept it safe. That's the most important thing. Even in the simulator, we want to make sure we keep it as safe as possible. Now, Smitty's not here this week, but um, if you guys haven't seen that video that was floating around YouTube, it had a ton of views. Um, one of our one of our competitors, Smitty, usually flies in the Wilga from Got Friends, one of our sponsors today. Um, he's got a full a full motion simulator and it tilts like 15 degrees but if you haven't seen that video you can probably just search uh smitty after the east hole and you can see smitty uh flying in vr in his full motion simulator and uh it's it's pretty funny pretty funny check it out so victor bosser's take off in the balance got that tail wheel up just hovering there in the wind We're 94. Really, really digging into the ground. They're cutting the grass. And he's up. Oh, it's short. It was really short. He's pulling at the right time. He's not giving up anything on that takeoff. And that's what you got to do to win. All right, Red Baron is coming up next. Byron Bowman, Kentucky. Currently lacking 65 points. Let's see if he can take off. Very, very good takeoff. It was really, really close to what Victor just did on the takeoff. Now they are they're both find the 170B. Yeah, so a so, uh, question from the chat here is, what is this simulated? Yes, this is actually a simulated national school competition. So just like NASCAR has... Uh, Oh, or, uh, excuse me, NASCAR has races and uh, like the drifting, the drifting community, they do a lot of uh, simulator stuff. There's actually a lot of people coming from those communities and they start out actually uh, in the simulator and then they come on to win in the real life thing. So, you know, what we want to see is the same thing. And I think uh, the simulator is a really good place to get your start because it's uh, a little cheaper on gas, of course, and Microsoft does a pretty good job and then not only that but we have our own in-house scenery developers and air bosses and ground bosses and everything that uh, do a full control over this race here today but it's really cool i was actually just out at swamp's goal so if you guys did miss that uh the, the in-person swamp soul competition was amazing and uh, you know, I started actually all of this in the simulator and uh, going out and helping uh, the National Stole guys and gals, helping them out to uh, set the whole thing up and how it runs was absolutely amazing. And we had a couple other of people, uh, excuse me, a couple other of our sim people out there helping out and donating their time to make a real life movement happen along with everybody else. And actually, number, uh, in place here, Byron Bowman. He's a pilot in real life as well. He's getting in his uh, his license. All right, Victor's coming in. Final landings. He's already in first place, so he can take it easy if he wants to. Uh, <laughs> chance Red Baron coming in and swooping that lead from him. So I'm sure we're going to see Victor Bosser giving it all he's got. He's already got one win under his belt this season. He won the he won the opener. And very, very short. Kind of just floated it right in. Looks like Red Baron's gonna go around. He came in a little too close. Uh Red Baron is uh Byron Bowman, Red Baron is also an A and P mechanic, so he hangs out in, uh, so I, I do a Twitch stream on the side, and uh, he hangs out in there a lot, and he gets to answer a lot of questions about aviation for me. So, Red Baron, I want to tell you thanks for all that, that you do for uh, my stream. 
Um, because I tell you what, he answers so many questions about real life aviation. Okay, so this is Frankie coming in in the 170Bs, all 170Bs now. Unfortunately, unfortunately Lily it is qualified. And very controlled, knows the wind is heavy today, 18 to 20 knots, coming straight down the runway. It's pretty steady, but it's still a lot different than these guys have, have uh, flown in all year this year. And a scratch, a scratch from Frankie, pretty clear scratch, but he's, he's going for it, going for it. And I'll tell you what. That would have been a really, really good landing from Frankie. But you got to give him props. He's, he's uh, gotten a lot. Uh, he's gotten a lot slicker over his last event. His last event, he was not happy with. But a real good showing from him today. Red Baron coming back around. Now he did go around. He got a little close to Victor. And just like in the real world, we like to keep it safe. All right, we're going to come in really cold, flaps down. Chris Williams says, I found a spot. Uh, actually, it disappeared too quick for me. If you can, uh, Tom, can you put that back up for me? Nice landing from Red Baron, a little over the 100 line. Uh, so, so Chris is finally tuning in. So I, I actually got to meet Chris. He's a pilot for uh, uh, Mesa Airlines, and uh, him and I became pretty good friends at the Stoll event. He was one of the volunteers, and uh, he's actually come and hung out in my street a couple times. A uh, really cool dude. He helped me learn how to fly the E jet, which is uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's uh, uh, in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. There is uh, Embraer 170 and 175. He flies the 175. He actually. Uh, taught me how to fly it in the simulator. And he said it was pretty darn close. As far as the differences between the same one and, and the real world. Uh, so it looks like we have Victor Grosser. Best takeoff, 76 feet. Best landing, 50. Best run, 126. We did best his, uh, his second. Got better every single run. Byron Bowman with 210 total best run and Frankie Poops with 213 and I think they were sitting on them scores since the very first round. And this class is presented by Parallel 42. If you guys haven't checked out their kit box or their many other sceneries and things like that, oh my gosh, it's a lot of fun. Go to Parallel42.com and check out everything that they have to offer. They're not just a company that offers planes. They offer sceneries and uh, effects and all kinds of things. So check out Parallel42.com. And with that, we're going to take it to a commercial break, and we'll be back in a minute. Hey, it's Trent. Fly low, don't die. Okay, my, my, my voice is... Flight Simulator Marketplace on PC and Xbox.
All right, guys, we're back from commercial break, and uh, coming up, we have the Bush class. It looks like. If you're watching Oklahoma East Bowl. This class presented by Hanger Studios. Coming up in the oh, okay, okay. So we actually, I, I mixed that up. My bad. First class was the Bush class, and now we're in touring class. That's probably why I didn't see any of the numbers popping up. That's okay. Um, so now we're watching. Uh, we're watching the touring. We'll be watching the touring class now. So we have number twelve, Mark Hawkins and the PZL Logo One Hundred and Four from Plymouth, UK. And now when I'm when I'm talking about where these people are from, this is actually where they're currently located. So we're flying in the simulator all here at Ark Homa. Mark Hawkins is actually actually from Plymouth, UK. So then we have Keith Chalet. I got to meet him at Swamp's Bowl in person. And uh, it was great to meet him. Uh, he's from Louisiana. And so that's why probably why I met him there, right? Not too far to drive to get into that competition. He's going to be in the Haviland Beaver. And I think this first. Um, one of our sponsors, Scott Friend, has done, Scott Friends has done quite a bit of work on the Beaver. So look at these nice uh, new tires and a lot of work done on the, uh, not just the regular old Beaver from the Sim. So then number 37, we have Big Papa Polly. He made his first appearance at the simulator opener. He's called Old Ferris Monsel, Wilga ADP, uh, is what he's flying today. And he's from Atlanta, Georgia. And last, we have a brand new competitor. His first ever event today, but he's really, really out here practicing. I've been watching him. And Brown Dog 942 from 94. In now, I know this livery from anywhere. This is Eric. This AKA Mark Hock, number 123, EZL 104 Wilg, beautiful specimen of an aircraft. Done by our friends over at Got Friends. Check them out at got-friends.com. Now the weather is looking very nice. It's very, very nice outside as far as the sun goes, but the wind, we're looking at 19 knots, almost straight down the runway. Now, if you look at the, the feather flag, um, you'll see that they're actually blowing whatever direction the wind is. So we have all this stuff set up in the simulator to um, you know, react with the weather. Now, the weather actually pulled from real METAR data. So what you're seeing here is live weather. This is what it actually is like out in Oklahoma today. Jack Patterson says, go Brown Dog. Look at that. I love seeing you guys cheer on your favorite uh, East Coast pilot. Yeah, Brown Dog is brand new with us. And Mark Hockey takes off and looks like a short one. Good. Great. Now, the PZL uh, 10480P is the Americanized version of a uh, iconic Polish bird. Um, and this is... Uh, the first time actually the ADP has been flown in the simulator, we actually made a split. Uh, we talked to all the pilots and we talked about switching over to the smaller wheel variant as a little smaller of an engine. A oh, very short takeoff. East Charlet, number 42. Actually, that's uh, actually not key. That is. I'm not sure who that is. Ah, big cup of coffee. Big Top of Holly. All right, now we're looking at Brown Dog 942. Also in the Volga. And. Looks like he's had some slim issues today, so he's going to run in the exhibition class at the end of the day if we can get his stuff figured out. Um, not sure if he wasn't able to load in or what, but no worries. He's will just follow up at the end of the end of the pack with these numbers. Kato says that was nice. Love the exhaust too. Yeah, it is absolutely wonderful. It's one of my favorite planes. Um, maybe from that, from the Wilga, Double Ender, Forgot Friends. Those two are really, really great. And then the 
checking out the kit box right now, and that right there is the first ever developer created uh, sponsor delivery. So you get to see that in a little bit. I think it's going to be during the unlimited class. And uh, by the way, guys, if you're going to FS Expo, you're going to see us there live at FS Expo. National East Hole is going to be there. National Hole is going to be there. We're going to be partying right next to the Got Friends tent. Come on out to FS Expo and check us out. If you're there, come say hi. We'd love to see you. These still competitions in MSFS. I didn't know these were a thing. Hey, yes, they are a thing. We've been doing this for uh, probably about June of 2023, and it has come a long way really really getting dialed in now we have a lot of pilots we have a really really core uh, good core group of pilots and uh, we have a really great uh, uh, just great group of people camera people ground boss air boss uh, you know oh looks like a great great landing from our cockpit now remember this is the first time we're seeing ADP we're gonna have to judge the performance as we go um, but anybody can join so it's not a close buff group if you want to join us Make sure to stop into nationalstoll.com slash chat, and that'll take you right to the Discord. And I know our pilots, they will they will bring you right in just like family. We have new people coming in every day. Um, now, this, okay, we have a disqualification. Looks like a little too hard landing. All right, it happens sometimes. Um, I'm not sure if that was Keith because we're saying Keith is supposed to be in a beaver. Uh, I'll have to get some clarification on that, so give me a minute here to find out who was just disqualified. Um, coming in is, that was Big Papa Polly, and he did actually have some time off from the simulator. He had, he had to do some stuff, and so he didn't compete in the last one. He may be a little bit rusty, but if you guys remember, he came in, Sliding sideways 12 hours before the sponsor event, the opener of National East Coast was here. He got a second place. And uh, I know he was out here practicing all night last night because I was out here with him. So, ooh, look at that. Nice landing. Only gave up a little bit there. Got to stop really quick. That might be winning score. We'll have to wait and see what the judges say, but Mark Hawkins came in at 226 and that's Brown Dog. This is Brown Dog's first time in the event. So, offer as far as the couple So, Big Papa Polly, I think he will be this one. Okay, so Big Papa Polly is out for the round. That's all right. Papa Polly did come in, like I said, in his first one. Came in like a wrecking ball and got a second place. After only knowing about East Bowl for 12 hours, that's how easy it is to get into this. And um, I know our pilots, they take everybody in. They take everybody in and bring in just like family and uh, we'll teach everything you need to know. It's super simple. I don't know how many pilots we've had come in and say, well, I'm gonna wait till next event and then, you know, someone like Pat or Aaron Bowman or Frankie or ADK takes them under their wings, throws them up to you, and book them. A few hours later, they're ready to go. We're going to line back up. We got Mark Hawkins, 123, number 123, from the UK. With his first round, 104 foot pick up, 120 foot landing. This might be a little shorter. Really, really good pick up, controlled. Just like you like to see. All right, brown dog in the beautiful National East Old Wogo livery. That livery is out there on flightsim.com for free, made by our scenery developer for you guys. So please go check it out. Making it look easy, brown dog taking off like a, a bat, uh, a bat out of hell. Um, Hound Dog, this, this is his first event. He 
and uh, we, we so I do I do a lot of group bush flights and things like that and brown dogs be hanging out and uh, we just you know fly around have fun all group anybody's welcome and uh, brown dogs been hanging out the last couple night and has been consistently flying the Wilga and just watching him land off field like that I knew he was gonna do good today I just had a feeling he was gonna do good he, he is in first place actually right now 184 for his first takeoff and landing total and then we have Mark Hawkins at 226. So there's not too much of a split. Just about 42 points, 42 foot split between the two. Uh, forecast is clear today. We have uh, right now currently 14 knots of wind from 160. 77 degrees. Straight down the runway for us too, by the way. The wind is just really, really perfect today for Skull. Like I said, we haven't actually had any really uh, heavy wind days go yet. I think the last competition we had uh, darn near a crosswind. And as the pilots come back around, we're going to take a look at a couple of our sponsors. Here we got Hot Friends. And Hangar Studios. Air Studios actually just come out with uh, for any of you, uh, any of you guys that like uh, warbirds or wartime planes. Hangar Studios just released L17B in the Microsoft Playtime Store and at all your third-party places. So wherever you prefer to buy it, I'm sure you can find it. Um, but I think they call that L17B the poor man's Mustang, and uh, so they, that that thing was actually used to carry around the grass. Well, now it's in the Microsoft Flight Simulator thanks to Hangar Studios. And the price is only $14.99, so it's a really good plan. The price is great. What else can we ask? Oh no, we have another we have another nose over. It looks like Mark Hawkins is going to Mark Hawkins is going to DQ on that nose over. You, know, you wouldn't believe it, but the nerves actually, you know, just because it's a flight simulator, I mean, this is this is something that, you know, you watch these guys land every day, and you, you don't see a lot of nose overs in practice, but the nerves can get to you. And so, you know, that's why it's a great place to practice in the sim before you go out and try it in real life. Because not only is it good on gas, but it's good on, you know, practice that back in because it is very similar to real life. Rat, I don't think it matters. I think Brown Dog's first course can carry him through the win for the round. Um, so he did beat his uh, he did beat his first kickoff by about seven feet. Um, his first landing was 78 and his second landing was a scratch. I think he'll take class with 184. Look at that another first timer with a win, I'm telling you guys, it's not impossible to come in here a day or two before the event with the you know, world-class training from PDK and all of our pilots that help out. I'm telling you guys, it is so much fun. And so if you want to do this, nationalschool.com, thanks to Pat. And Jack Pattison says, Brown Dog, the people's camp already. That's what I'm talking about, man. Let me tell you, I, uh, I actually uh, had Brown Dog's perspective up on my stream uh, while we were doing a push flight the other night, and uh, just you know, I just had it up there along with mine, and I was watching him fly. And uh, definitely, I don't know what his uh, sim history is, what his sim background is. I'm not sure how long he's been in the flight sim, but he, he does make it look like he's an old pro. I think Brown Dog is going to line up and go ahead and last. Uh, this last round. So, so he is going to take his last round because we still have Keith Charlet. So he had some issues. He wasn't able to load in the simulator. So Keith is actually going to take his last round during the exhibition class. So he will fly with the exhibition flyers, but he's not going to be actually in that class. He'll take his touring round in the exhibition class. So, Round Dog didn't automatically get the first place because of the other qualification. 
and it looks like we have Finger Studios up on the board. Finger Studios 213.com. Finger Studios 213.com. You can get the LCM PMP right in the Microsoft Flight Sims Store. Got friends as well. And these are sponsors, real life sponsors, all of the National East Coast. These are developers in the sim, so you know we're looking at the developers that make different things with the sim, like planes, different things like effects. Parallel 42 has a ton of different things. And check out at parallel42.com. And the QR codes actually work. So if you take a screenshot of that QR code, it will take you to their website. Um, Flying Fry. Okay, Flying Fry is a new developer. Does anybody, now this would be a question just for the sim, the sim folk. But anybody remember the Scrapyard Monster? You remember the Scrapyard Monster? Type a one. Yeah. Scrapyard Monster was made by Flying Prize. It was the first release as part as uh, a full plane. Now he's created the X11, which is, as you know, the famous Howard Hughes aircraft, the X11. And uh, I'll tell you what, it is a beautiful, beautiful aircraft. I've heard nothing but good about it. I had it. At it Alpha, and currently I'm on a world tour with it right now, and uh, it is just amazing. So you can check that out. That's also in the store, Microsoft store, and at all your third party Look at that shot! What a gorgeous shot! Hound Dog just taking his time. Now he doesn't automatically get the win because we still have Keith Charlet going to come in and run his touring class rounds in the exhibition class. But with a score of 184 and great flying like that, it's going to be hard for Keith to come in and swipe that lead. But it's not impossible. Keith is a heck of a pilot. He gives up about. 10 feet or so. Not the best landing. Now, we did have a little glitch there. Obviously, sometimes on the uh, any internet game is going to glitch a little bit. We just had a little bit of a glitch there of his plane. But either way, he's going to keep the score of 184. Don't forget about Keith Charlet. He's going to be in the Beaver during the exhibition class. That'll wrap it up for this part of the touring class. Well, let's take a look at some results. We're going to look at Brown Dog 942. As we just said, 97 foot best takeoff, 28 foot best landing, best run of 184. Mark Hawkins, same plane, best takeoff. Only one foot of difference for the best takeoff. That's amazing. So 98, he's, he's not lacking by much there. Look at that, one foot. Um, now the landing, uh, we're uh, close to 40 feet different on the landing. But uh, very, very close indeed. Brown Dog will hold on to that. But the only one that can knock him out is Charlie. So now we are going to line up for the unlimited class. The unlimited class is typically the most anticipated class, but we have a special prize after the unlimited class today. We won't talk about that now, but I do want to prime you guys up for that. We do have a special class after the Unlimited class today, and it's the first time ever for National East Bowl. Pilots have been super excited about it. And let's just say it's going to be a really uh, great test of skill from the pilot. We'll talk about that in a little bit. First, let's talk about the Unlimited class. We've got Riley Wilson from Lethbridge, Canada, in the Zenith. Cat Blue Flame, also in the Zenith, 8701 from Great Britain. Nor Kelly J in the 2020 Savage Carbon from California, U.S. Zach Lobert from Hartford, Wisconsin in the Monster NX Cup. It's like uh, a lot of, uh, a lot, uh, only one tailwheel seems, oh no, two tailwheels. We have Pete. We have Luke Carrier in the Zenith from Waynesville, Ohio. And then last but not least, brand new pilot in this in the series, this event in the kit box. Ooh, and another page. And we have we have Fox from Parallel 42, and then we have Carl Vam in the 2013 Savage Gravel. Carl's from Norway. 
Now let's take a travel in the Savage Carbon that NorCali is flying. You can get those for free on got-friends.com. Even the Xbox people, are not for free, because Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't allow free things in the store, but even if you're on Xbox, you can get the Savage Gravel and the Savage Carbon, along with four other planes in Got Friends Legacy Pack for only $4.99. Check that out in the Microsoft Flight Simulator store. Looks like uh, Raleigh Wilson's taking a little break, leaning on the job there. Now take a look at these liveries, guys. These liveries are handmade by pilot, except for Pete, because Pete had his livery made by Parallel 42. I think even Edson himself might have made that livery. Well, the wind is really, really bad, and we don't have any wind, uh, any wing walkers. Now, typically, in a real national school event, if the wind is bad enough where these lighter planes are going to tip, uh, they will use wing walkers to actually physically hold on to the wing and walk the pilots out. But we do not have wing walkers in the sim. We gotta we gotta pay Anov a little more even to bring in some functional wind walkers in, in the sim. But we're gonna get these pilots lined up. Looks like Riley Wilson's gonna be first. Now Riley Wilson, quite the character. Okay, Riley is a writer. He does uh, writing in the sim. For a magazine called Threshold. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard. Parallel 42 says, Go Pete! Heck yeah, man. Edson's out there just hooting and hollering in the chat. Great to see you, Edson. I'm sure the boys from Got Friends and Goes and Flying Cries, I'm sure all these guys are here too. It's great to see a lot of developers supporting this. Um, these pilots sure do love it and appreciate it, guys. And, and uh, Parallel 42 has uh, sponsored. Now this is Riley Wilson, the 701. I wonder if his tires are filled with helium. If anybody finds any evidence of helium balloons hanging around uh, Riley Wilson's plane, please, please report that to ADK. Uh, Cat Blue Flame in the 701, she made this livery herself. Little cat ears just hanging out. Oh no, she touches back down. So her, her her takeoff will be extended because she touched back down. But still a pretty good takeoff from Cat. And uh, looks like she's off and good to go. So next up we have North Cali J. North Cali J in Carbon. Now, this is kind of a heated debate in much of a flight simulator between a couple different groups, but you have the people that fly the carbon. It has a smaller motor. It's very similar to gravel. It has a, a six-cylinder Mustang engine in it and nitro. Don't get those confused. Norcali is in the carbon. And we do have a gravel in here. I can't remember who was flying that at the point, but I will let you know. Um, next up, we have number 33, Zach Obert in the Monster NX Cub, another God Friend special. Very, very short takeoff. Did touch the tail a little bit on the ground. I'm not sure if that's going to result in any penalties. I don't think so, but I don't. Okay, yeah, the tail's fine to hit on the ground. Ask Justin Tisdale. He does it every once in a while. In real life. It happens in these, uh, it happens in those wheel aircraft sometimes. The way I see it is the tail wheel aircraft can have their tail on the ground, so can nose wheels. How's everybody doing out there in the chat today? I hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, this has been, uh, a gr I've had a really great time. You know, I started out my career in aviation a long time ago, about 12 years ago, I started flying helicopters. I flew a 1979 Enstrom F-18. And then the flight school I was going to closed down. I was not able to finish my license. I stopped for about 26 hours. And back then it was only $320 an hour. And that was, you know, wet with a buy. Um, so, Nowadays, I've heard it's somewhere near $700. I'm probably never going to go back to my helicopter license, but we want to get my LSA and hopefully compete in national school competitions in the flesh. But I found out about all of this, all of this, from Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I think it's a great representation of what you can do. Oh, almost touches the ground. It gives up a little bit, but he's able to get that power back in. 
and get stopped in a safe manner. Riley Wilson showing his skill right there. Still with a short landing, almost a disaster, but he didn't even touch the ground. Coming in is Cat Blue Flame number 69 in the CH701. And her skill really, really shows. Now look at that. You know, Cat, time and time again, Cat just kills it with her landings. She's very, very spot on. She's one of the most, um, let's just say she focuses really hard. She practices a lot. And she just nailed that landing. It showed. Now, Nor Cali. Cali's another great pilot. He's been flying in this sim for a long time. He flies the carbon almost religiously. Every time I check out his, his stream over on Twitch, he's leading a group flight with the carbon. Uh, and he did end up scratching. He's just got close to the wind out here. Like I said, we have not had any competitions with this much wind. Now it is right down the runway. There's not a lot of dust. It's pretty it's pretty straight down the runway and pretty pretty calm uh, or uh, pretty consistent. Looks like uh, Zach Lover's going to do a go around in the Monster NX Cub. First round takeoff from Zach was 37 feet. So let's talk scores. Okay. Riley and Cat are about 70 feet apart. I don't have my calculator, but just looking at it, it's about, it's about 70 feet apart, right? Cat's at 58, Riley's at 129. They're flying the same plane. Now, Riley is new to the 701. He originally started out flying a different plane and decided to switch over to the 701, which you know, I support the decision, of course, um, but you know what's going to happen when you switch planes is you got to get used to the new plane. So, um, you will see for sure out of Riley a, a better score. Cat's going to have to really try hard to beat that last round because she nailed that landing. As you've seen, man, we, we've been giving up, you know, a lot of the pilots have been giving up at least 20 feet on their landings, and, and Cat didn't give up. I don't even know if she gave up anything on her landing, and that just goes to show skill. Another great landing, Zach Loberg. I think this is Zach's second competition. I don't remember if he flew the NX Cub in the last competition, but really solid landing. Folks, yeah. um, also, guys, to bring these two worlds together, right? This is why we do this. Zach was a volunteer at Hartford, Wisconsin. In the person in person volunteered his time helped set up a real national stole competition so that's kind of a theme here i think we've had um we've had zach we've had Vinny, we've had me we've had, we've had Thomas, dragon a lot of these guys out here from you know the, the east bowl world from microsoft flight simulator are going out and helping out another these national stole competitions we love it you know we love it we absolutely love it and i tell you what if it wasn't for microsoft flight simulator and me seeing uh, the Camdonians ripping around on a Husky one day in the flight sim, I don't even think I would have noticed or knew which planes existed. And that was you know, 12, 13 months ago. Now look at, we're running national East Bowl competitions, hanging out at real national Bowl competitions. I actually run the uh, ran the camera on the 100 foot line. Uh, first time I've ever used the camera. I don't know if anybody could tell, uh, but I think uh, with the training that I got from uh, Tom's guys did a decent job. I have to ask, I have to ask National Patrol about that, but I think it was pretty good. Riley's taking off. His first takeoff was 81 feet. First landing was 48, and for a total of 129, looks like he beat that first takeoff by about 43 feet, so he's at 38 foot. Uh, excuse me, that's Cat's. Uh, Cat's first takeoff was 38 feet. Now Cat may have gotten a shorter takeoff than 38. Now I know Cat's, Cat's her her takeoffs and landings do look crazy. I'll tell you what, she's been flying that plane religiously. Never switch. It's always in the 701. Practices like wouldn't believe. Or Cali taking off. 
think Lord Kelly had a scratch on his first landing, but his takeoff was really good at 38 feet. Another short takeoff from North Cali. And if that was a go around or what? Looks like we have a little glitch. Um, no big deal. It happens. It happens sometimes in the system. Uh, lining up, we got number 33, Zach Lobert, in the Monster NX Cub. First round takeoff was 37 feet. First round landing was 62 for a total of 99. Another short takeoff. Oh, look at that. Look at that plane. Take a look at that plane from uh, the profile of that plane from behind. It kind of looks like a darn sports car. So, so about three years ago, the NX Club, uh, the NX Club showed up at Sun and Fun and competed with National Stole. And I think, if I remember right, I think they did pretty good. Now, I didn't see that, but Tom talked to me about it at one point. And I don't think it's often they see a lot of NX Cubs at the, uh, at the National Stole competition. I think a lot of the guys now are, are really hot on this. Uh, this uh, oh, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of that plane. Uh, it, it's, it's a Cub. Uh, Badlands, Badlands Cub. Anybody in chat know know if that's if that's correct? I think it's I think it's the Badlands Cub, Badlands Traveler. That's what it's called. And check out those guys on top of the trailer there. What's cool is I actually got to hang out and stand and set up uh, set up everything on top of the trailer at the real National Stoll competition. And guys, if you guys are close. Take a look at nationalstole.com and check out their uh, check out their season, right? The real life competitions. Check out their season. See if you got one close to you. And if you do, get a hold of us. Nationalstole.com slash chat. Get a hold of us and say, hey, I would love to come out and hang out, meet some pilots, donate a little of my time, and uh, just have a blast. Um, if you guys want to do that, you can definitely get a hold of us. It looks like a scratch from Riley. But I'll tell you what, if you're not scratching, you're not pushing hard enough. You'll see that some of the best pilots still do scratch every once in a while. And, and it's a lot different than backcountry flying. You know, if you're flying in the simulator or you're flying in the real world, uh, it looks like Cat's going to go around just to be safe. Riley's taking just a second to get off the runway. Uh, okay, we're tracking Norcali's coming in. Nice and low. Not going to drop it in. He's going to take the he's going to take the low uh, nose up approach, and the wind is really really keeping him up. Oh my gosh! Scratch. Now the rules the rules are a little different now. Okay, so before you could land on the line, right? But the rules have actually changed in the real national stole and east stole. We do them exactly the same. So now you actually have to land over the line. So oh, this is something that is changed in National School, IRL, real life competitions, and in East Hole. So that was a scratch from NorCali because he landed on the line. This is going to be tough to call. Lowbird with the Monster NX Cub. And I'm really impressed at the way, I'm really impressed at the, um, the patterns here. These pilots are coming in one after another. That's what helps keep the action flowing here. We, we, we work really hard. The practice this, um, you know, weekly practices we have to make sure that the pilots can do the patterns and uh, take off every 30 seconds and, you know, keep their altitudes and everything like that. So and you guys can join in the practices too. Um, anybody who's out there watching this and thinks, hey, I want to get into national stole, whether it be real life or sim, whether it be e-stole or regular stole, it doesn't matter. Nationalstole.com slash chat. Reach out to me. Uh, burst TV or reach out to ADK, reach out to Tom, any one of us, tell us you want to join up in one fashion or another, whether it be East Bowl or volunteering, whether you want to compete. Oh my gosh, Cat hovered it in. She got a lot of love from the wind. 20 knot steady wind, and she just sets, she sets that nose up, sets, the, sets that tail back. And just right in. And I'll tell you what, in a 20 knot wind in the zenith, you can do that. Oh, 
Okay, so you know how I told you guys earlier that we had a special guest joining us and then nothing ever happened? You guys probably thought I was lying to you. Well, now we got Justin Tisdale stopping in. I think he's live from his 7750. Looking pretty looking pretty great in his uh in his shades there. Justin Tisdale. How you doing, bud? I can hear Austin, but I don't know if he can hear me. Listen, we can hear you. I can hear you. Well, you can hear me. Holy jeez, yes, yeah. So we're uh, we're headed out from Huntsville right now, headed to Sun and Fun, and uh, we're cruising at 4,100, going to 5,500. Uh, cruising at a gnarly 55 across the ground. 55 across the ground. Like uh, about a 15 knot headwind right now. But it's beautiful up here. I don't know if I can show you guys. I want to see if I can do this. This is interesting. Five across that? the ground. So how long? How long in uh, in time do you got? What's your ETA to get to uh, Sun and Fun? Yeah, we're headed to Sun and Fun. Oh, it looks beautiful. I can see uh, the clouds uh, look non-existent. The sky looks blue. Wow. Take a look at that. Now, if you guys just getting in here, we're uh, we're running through the unlimited class, but we have a special guest on, Justin Tisdale, number eighteen, flying the Zenith seven fifty in in the real life stole competition. I think he uh, took a fourth place after a, after a face off for third during the swamp stole competition. And if you guys didn't if you guys didn't see the video of Justin, um, there's a reason why they call it swamp stole. Okay. So at the competition in person there at Swamp Soul uh, in Jennings, Louisiana, Justin had a clip that he was uh, he was uh, coming through a giant puddle, and it was amazing. Just the the blade slap in the water. Um, I don't know if I don't know how cool you thought that was, Justin, but I'm so happy they caught that on camera because it was awesome, dude. How much did it cost you to uh, to run through that puddle? Not once, but twice. I think we I think we lost Justin's audio, but hey, at least we get to look at him. Look at him. He's just such a such a cool dude, man. Justin flying around. Got his got his visor on. Where where's that helmet from? Hel I think it's a, I think it's a Lift Aviation helmet. Lift a Look at that. Look how cool that is. I want to get one. I don't even fly, but I might just wear it while I'm driving around my car. Oh, uh, how about now, Tom? So we have NorCali, number 22, in the East competition, taking off. We're going to see a short takeoff yeah. from NorCali. Yeah, yeah, Slaps the tail, didn't pull a yeah. second early, oh, right cool. on time, in an awesome takeoff from Justin, or I mean, uh, NorCali. I think we got Justin's uh, audio about back. to watch Justin. this happen can and you? fly at the same time. What's going on? Yeah, I can hear you guys now. Nice. So I, I saw, um, you know, we were texting today and uh you were working on your plane how far along did you get how much uh how much time you got until your plane squared away from what you were working on yesterday nice takeoff from the nx club so he about thirty thousand dollars in trash avionics and twelve hundred dollars in ecbs we got it all fixed we've got new wiring we've got a new rdac we've got pretty much a screen it's completely updated, so we're in the air. We're headed to sun and fun with it all. And it's working great. Thirty thousand dollars in repairs, man, and that was that was all from driving through that yeah. puddle. Oh my gosh! With uh, that kind of going through that storm, I shouldn't have went through that storm, but it's uh. It's you know, and uh, it's all I had to do what I had to do. Um, luckily, the guys at Evolution took care of me, so it didn't wind up costing me, you know, quite that much. But it was still a hit in my pocketbook. This stuff's a uh, stuff's expensive sport.
So what are you looking forward to most uh, about Sun and Fun? Are you competing there? What's What are you doing at Sun and Fun this weekend? Riley Wilson's coming in, number 68, in the 701. First round, takeoff 81. Second round, takeoff 38. And it looks like he's going to give up quite a bit on the landing. But he did get stopped short, but it still looks like he's going to be about 100 feet. So it's not going to beat, it's not going to beat his, first, uh, his first landing. So his best round is probably going to be his first round. Cat Blue Flame coming in. Her second round was 36 feet total. 18 on takeoff, 18 on landing in a 20 knot wind with a plane that weighs as much as a paper airplane. Third round with a 15 foot takeoff. And she, that may be a scratch. Now that's uh, most likely going to be a scratch. If any part of her wheel touched down on that white line, that is a scratch. But that doesn't mean that she did a bad job because I'll tell you what, it's tough to get on that line. That line, when you're when you're in the sim and you're flying, you know, regular backcountry or you know, when you're in the real world and you're you're flying bush and backcountry, you don't have a super specific spot to land on. It's still difficult. I mean, it's it's always gonna be difficult when you're when you're you know trying to land short, but adding that line in there. You really have to get over that in your in your mind. It's it's really um, it's really interesting. So if you haven't ever, you know, you can download these airstrips for free, free at flightsim.io. And it looks like Zach Zach came in in the Monster NX Cub. Looks like a pretty short landing, but I don't think it's going to beat his second round of twenty seven feet. And in, his takeoff didn't beat his second round either. So his second round might be the best. So NorCali's coming in. It's all for the money right here for NorCali. 35-foot takeoff. His takeoffs are very, very consistent. 38-foot on the first round, 38-foot on the second round, 35-foot on the third round. But he's DQ'd on both his first and second round. So this is really it for NorCali. He's got to stick this one in there and get it stopped. Now he's really banking on that 20-knot wind. And he needed to add a little power. I think he touched. If he didn't touch, that would be really, really good. I can't tell. We're going to have to wait to see what the judges say. I think he did touch before the line. But um, if he would have got in the power enough, if he would have got in enough power early, he probably could have kept it from touching the ground. But that is difficult. That is not to take away anything from NorCali's landing because I tell you what, it's a really tough thing. And like I was saying, to bring it back to what I was, what I was saying before uh, the NX Cub landed, when you put that line in there and you have to land on that line or you get, you know, you get docked if you land over the line, right? That adds a whole nother, um, it adds a whole nother, a whole nother um, difficulty to landing short, right? So, but if you guys have never tried this before, even if you're, even if you bought Microsoft Flight Sim the day it came out way back in 2020, and you, you thought it was cool, but you never have touched it since, come back and check out some Eastol. You can get these airstrips for free. If you're on PC, they're at flightsim.to. And just type in Eastol. We'll be the only ones that show up. And we have about five or six different, uh, five or six different ones on flightsim.to. So we're gonna head to a quick commercial break. And it looks like we're gonna be checking out Flying Fries XF11 
He was a famous trumpet man from our Chicago way. He had a boogie style that no one else could play. He was a top man at his craft. But then his number came up and he was gone with the draft. He's in the army now, a blowing reveille. He's the boogie boogie bugle boy of Company B. They made him blow a bugle for his uncle Sam. It really brought him down because he couldn't jam. The captain seemed to understand. Because the next day the cap went out and drafted a fan. And now the company jumps when he plays reveille. He's the boogie boogie bugle boy of Company B. A root, a toot, a tooly, a tooty blows the H to the bar. In boogie rhythm, you can't blow a note unless the bass and guitar is playing with him. He's the boogie boogie bugle boy of Company B. All right, guys, we are back at Oklahoma Stoll 2024 at the Patriot Air Park. We'll be seeing a first ever competition here in the real world. National Stoll is coming to Patriot Air Park, and uh, that's going to be coming very soon. I'm going to get you guys an actual date on that one if I can. Um, but now we're testing it out in the sim. Now, if you guys don't know, how do we make these? How do we make these beautiful? Uh, flight simulator sceneries. How do we do that? Well, it all starts with Tom. Tom has a plan, right? So National Stoll has an aerial view of what they want to do when they come into uh, an airport or an airstrip. And so we give that to our scenery uh, creator, Anoff. He's from Switzerland, by the way. And uh, he places everything just as it would be at the real competition. So this is exactly what you would see when you go to a real life competition. Well, almost, almost. Very, very close though. But take a look at this, uh, take a look at this scenery. Anov does such a great job. He does all this stuff from scratch. It makes all this stuff, the billboards, the signs. Everything is done handcrafted beautifully. We even have the National Stole trailer, which is back behind us. Got a couple of the uh, the uh, Got Friends pedal boats out there. That is a freeware. Got Friends released it as a freeware on their website for April Fool's Day, but it's actually a lot of fun. So jokes on them. They released an April Fool's Day joke that was actually a ton of fun. So check it out at got-friends.com/burstix, and you can grab that pedal wheel for free. Yes, you can drive a paddle wheel boat in the flight sim. You can even drive a dune buggy in the flight sim. Parallel 42 has the juice goose. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun. But yeah, I have a blast in the flight sim. I'll tell you, it is, uh, I spend a lot of time in the flight sim. It's very, very enjoyable. And I think my favorite part about it is the camaraderie. You know, I used to ride motorcycles uh, quite a bit with my friends, and uh, most of them sold their motorcycles. So, like, I kind of scratched that itch of like a group ride. I kind of scratched that itch with uh, with the flight sim. Now we do a lot of group flights. We're gonna have one today after the stream. So, if you guys have Microsoft Flight Sim, come on over to Twitch.tv/BurstixTV and join uh, join us in the flight sim for a group flight. We're gonna have some fun and hit some river bars, do some bush flying. So. Part two of the unlimited class is coming up. A 701. And we have a green flag loop carrier on the line in 701. I think this is Luke's second competition with us. I think his first one was at uh, our very last competition at uh, Virginia. So far, this is uh, group number two for the unlimited class. So far we have Cat in first place with 36 feet. We have Zach L in second place with 52 feet total, takeoff and landing. Norcali J with 57 feet. 
Look at that's that's so close. That is so like 20 feet separating our top three. Riley coming in at 129, kind of rounding out the pack a little higher than everybody else. But that's all right. Some days you just can't get anything to work out exactly the way you want it to. But Riley is a great pilot, and uh, we'll see him at the top. I'm sure we have a lot more coming this year, and everybody's fighting for series points right now. So we'll see Riley back at the top. I'm sure in no time. Looks like we're having some lag. So, you know, in real life you have, you know, maybe your rudder pedal break off on landing, like Justin Tisdale at the Tennessee, uh, at the Tennessee uh, Music City Stole competition. In the sim, you don't have that. You don't have a pedal breaking off, like in real life, but you do have a little bit of lag. And it looks like Pete C in the pit box taking off. That is uh, actually the very first official developer created sponsor livery. So that livery was made for Pete as he's a sponsor pilot of Parallel 42. And uh, maybe even Edson himself made that livery. I have no idea. But I'll tell you what, it sure looks good. Now this is my favorite livery of the entire competition. No offense to anybody else, but I love this livery. And number 555, Carl Pham in the Savage Gravel. Now this plane, the Savage Gravel, is equipped with nitrous. And in the Unlimited class, nitrous is okay. So he, he can, in a 20 knot wind, he can almost take off vertically. Um, and you can compare that somewhat to, uh, like you see, um, Steve Henry, or some of the, some of the other Highlanders, uh, where you get these uh, this high wind situation coming straight at you, and you just hit that nitrous and, and float off into the sunset. I'll tell you what, I'm really surprised. Um, like I said earlier, I, I was at the uh, Swamp Stole event in Louisiana in person there, and I got to meet um, I got to meet Dan Reynolds and Hale Stockman. And a couple of the other uh, other pilots like uh, Sheldon Hetherington. Um, gosh, I mean, there were so many of them. But I tell you what, every single one of them was really, really great to talk to. And everybody was so nice and so welcoming. So if you haven't been out to a national stole competition in person, get out there. A parallel 42 says, Livery created by our own Rock View, a team effort with Studio 42 doing the design work. Edson just... Uh, I think Edson says Edson just cried over how beautiful it came out, and I can imagine that's Edson typing that. I I have to imagine that's Edson typing that, giving himself a little guff. I got I love it. It's it's amazing, man. Parallel Forty Two, a lot of fun. Those guys are are a great time. Check them out over at Parallel42.com. They are a sponsor of today's event out here at Oklahoma. And let's see. So a little variation in altitude coming in. Looks like he's gonna plant it on the 10. Actually, that might be the 20. Don't quote me. I don't I don't do the judging. I just sit here and talk to you guys and have a good time. Alright, so we have the Kit Fox. Stage two coming in. Got the wigwag lights on. Being a little bit fancy on coming in. You'll see that actually in the real life competitions. It's pretty neat to see when they come in with their uh, with their uh, wigwag lights on. Holding it off. Holding it off. Almost. Almost. There we go. Now. There we go. Safe landing. A little longer. He gave up a little bit of it. Um. So. Oh, you see the wing the wing lift up a little bit from all that wind. He's trying to get off the runway so we can have our next pilot come in. And they're going to decide to come in. Everything's safe. The runway's clear. Holding it off. Oh, he didn't get a chance to hold it up all the way. Stall or scratch. Oh, very, very close, though. That's all right. It's the first round. A lot of pilots will take the first round easy and uh, make sure that they don't scratch and get a score on the board, but not every pilot does it like that. Some pilots go for it every single round. That's the joy of life. You gotta have different types 
you gotta have different type you know what I'm saying and there's our camera guy DeWert that's actually a 3d model of the real DeWert so you'll see um, our camera guys here that are doing the uh, the camera they're actually doing that with a drone live time right now and uh, so our scenery developer got some of these guys in to the simulator and so how fitting to have DeWert on the camera there All right, so the Luke Carrier, first round, 96, takeoff, 23-foot landing, 119 total, 99 Luke Carrier in the Zenith CH-701. Second round, coming up right now. His score is not going to be enough to take any of the first four spots, but it will put him in fifth place, and it will knock Riley Wilson down by 10 feet fifth place currently going to try to break that and try to overcome cat score of 36 and that might wow really short takeoff we got a 24 knot wind right now just taking a look at the at the wind uh um the wind here at the runway 24 knot wind for that takeoff luke carriers he's happy I don't know if you prayed to Poseidon before that one or what, but holy. Now, Pete sees a little bit behind the line. He said, I don't care. I don't know if that results in a disqualification or not. We'll leave that to the judges. But a nice takeoff nonetheless in the beautiful Kit Fox from Parallel 42. <clears throat> The Kit Fox was the first plane that I ever got in the flight simulator. And I'll finish this story here after... After... Uh, Carl, number 555, hitting that nitrous and just blasting off into the sky. So if Carl, can, if Carl can bring it in on the line, he's got a really good chance of coming in and kind of knocking Cat out of there. Cat's the one to beat. Now, she she wasn't able to complete uh, the last competition at Virginia Beach because she had some issues with her virtual reality. Um, she flies in virtual reality, and there were some issues. She didn't actually finish her competition, and she decided to put that one out. She's, she's hungry for some points. So she's not going to give it up easy, but she's done fine. So, you know, it's now up to these guys to take her out. I don't think it'll be easy, though. <clears throat> um, so anyway, the Kit Fox was the first plane that I had gotten in the flight simulator. But there's a little caveat to that. I bought the wrong Kit Fox. I bought, <laughs> I bought the, uh, another Kit Fox. Um, there's, a, there's a Kit Fox Series 7. And I'm flying around with these group, this group, Candonians. I'm flying around with them, and I'm like, everybody's taking off, and all these short amounts of, uh, you know, all these short distances. And I'm like, I can't even get off the ground. Well, little did I know, I bought the wrong kit box. But you know, good couple days to figure it out. That's why, if you have questions, just ask. I'm usually pretty good at that too, but for some reason, I didn't didn't ask. I just tried figuring it out on my own. Um, but it's, the Kitbox Series 7 in the simulator, it does have uh, Airmaster prop. I had it on manual, and <laughs> I had it on cruise mode. So yeah, I couldn't take off very good with that. It changed the uh, prop to a non-desirable pitch to take off. But anyway, when I finally did get the right Kitbox, ooh, nice, nice landing. That might be able, oh, I don't know. Out of wind, I don't know what they're going to call that, but that was a really guy. That was a really nice landing. But anyway, when I got the Kit Fox from Parallel 42, I was happy I had the right one. I flew it forever. I flew it for a month straight, and then I kind of put it on the back burner for a little while. Started flying the wheel go around, and I just recently started getting back in the Kit Fox. They updated the tail wheel to be a little more realistic to real life because uh, tail wheels are pretty bouncy in real life. And so I'm trying to master it again. And it's been a blast trying to master the pit box again. Give up. 
about 20. Uh, so score stands. Luke C took the lead by how many feet? Only two. Only two feet. Luke C just dethroned Cat. And that is insane by two feet. Wow. Luke, where did you come from, guy? Box axiom off the runway here. Look at that livery. Number 88. Wow, Luke's. I, I still can't get over this. Is this. I don't know if this is real life or, or if we're in a simulator, but. Uh, oh, yeah, we are in a simulator. But either way, 34 feet. I guess that's what happens when you get a 25 knot win. Now, I know I'm going to be hearing it from Cat later because I know that Cat's wind was a little bit less than 25 knots, but that's the way it goes. Okay? That's the way it goes in the real world and in the flight simulator because we have real world weather here, so we can't do anything about what uh, you know, which way the wind blows, uh, you know, how how hard the wind blows, etc. But you know, we have a lot more competitions coming up this year, and I'm sure Cat will get. In more favorable win. And it was only a couple knots anyway. But still, great job to Lutsky, 34 feet. Coming in, like I said earlier, my favorite livery in the entire simulator. Guide with Pete Steve's <laughs> Parallel 42 kit box livery. But really, I love this livery, this uh, Carl's livery. He did it himself. Getting them flaps in, starting to slow down. It's gonna go with now a lot of times you see these guys that have a lot of power in their plane the guys and gals that have a lot of power in their plane they're gonna drag what they call drag the prop almost touch the safe gives up about 10 feet and gets it stopped I know this gravel well enough I wasn't worried about a nose over there it may have looked a little spooky but I'll tell you what I know the gravel well enough you don't start nosing over until that tail gets above about uh, you know parallel to the ground. Alright, so we got one more round in the unlimited class. Carl. 19 foot takeoff on the first one. Best tap by five feet for the second run. Still waiting for the landing. And it will be a little longer, I think, than his first run because he gave up about 10 20 feet. So his his first run, Carl's first run is going to be 43. So quite a bit better in the second run, but still a really great run. We're talking 74 feet, guys. 74 feet for takeoff and landing. Now you got airliners out there that get three, four, five thousand feet to take off, and then another three, four, five thousand feet to land. These planes are much different than that. They're lighter, they're smaller, and they're a lot more fun. All right, so final lap of the unlimited class, Luke Carrier. His best is 34 right now. Luke Carrier is holding on for dear life here. I don't know if he's going to beat that 34. I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen. I, uh, I don't even know if I want to look. I might have to close my eyes. Seen 701, getting ready to take off. Oh, it just takes right off the ground. And 23, 24 knots. And just, just takes off, uses all that wind to get in and out of ground effect. And just make it do on around the pattern here. Now the box, stage two, a lot of power in this plane. I imagine we'll see a three-point takeoff with that stick all the way back and the flaps just a, just a drop. drop. And, oh, look at that. Very, very short takeoff from the Kip Fox. Now, the Kip Fox is a bit heavier than the 701. With that extra power, we'll get these short takeoffs.
So if you guys are unfamiliar with how uh, you know how planes take off, when a, when a plane when a plane like this takes off, let's say that there was no wind, right? Well, then the plane would have to get to about 30 knots to take off. Okay, so you would be going down the runway and you would take up you get to about 30 knots and then you can take off, right? And that's the speed that's going speed of the wind going underneath your winds, and now you have uh, wings, and now you have the ability to take off. But when the wind is blowing at you, similarly to how the military uses wind on an aircraft carrier to be able to take off, right? They go in the direction of the wind. Well, it's the same thing that's happening here. When you have a 24 knot wind, you only really need to get five more knots of speed to take off. So that's how you're seeing these short, short takeoffs. And on top of that, the unlimited class is filled with very light planes. And these planes are designed this way. In the real world, they're designed this way. In the sim, they're designed this way. They're made to be short takeoff and landing planes, hence short takeoff and landing goal. So Luke's still holding on to the lead, 34 feet. Coming back around, I don't know. We may see Luke beat his other score if he can nail the landing and not give up anything. I mean, he 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 can't give up anything. Got a four foot takeoff, the big gust of wind coming in around 24, 25 knots, he was able to pull at just the right time. And again, with that 30 knot wind blowing at your face, that's, that's the same thing as you know your plane. Uh, speeding up to 30 knots down the runway, except it's, uh, wind's coming at you. Holds it off. Holds it. I don't know if he touched. I cannot. I think it was good. I saw two different views. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna have to wait. I'm gonna have to wait. The suspense is intense. The suspense is intense. Okay, Pete's D coming in. 19 foot takeoff in the first round. Head scratch. Thanks for the first round. Second round, 25 foot takeoff, 65 foot landing. Third round, 28 foot takeoff. Now he's got to nail it. He's got to nail it right here. Got to get a four foot landing. Holds it off a little too long, but oh my gosh, if that that could have that could have literally been five or six feet. That could have put him in first place if he would have landed on the line, which is what this is the hardest thing about this, guys. Landing on the line is the hardest thing about this. Anybody can fly bush in the sim, you know. But to be a professional in the National East School Series, you gotta hit the line and keep it so good but had a little, gave up a little bit on the landing, and that, that'll make all the difference. And, wow, wow. Wind is gusting to 36 now, guys. We are seeing astronomical winds out here, and I think this is one of the best places for skull that I've ever been to. I love the wind. I want to be able to put my parking brake on and float, float backward, okay? That's, why, that's how much I love the wind. I don't know about you guys, but who needs to fly forward when you've got this much? <laughs> I don't know if we're going to see negative pickoffs today or what, but if the wind keeps going the way it does, I think, I, I swear, someone is uh, like praying to the wind gods or like calling up Poseidon from this pond over here and, uh, you know, wishing for storms because uh, we're, the wind is just going insane. So, wow, Luke Carrier with eight, eight feet in first place. Cat with 36. And it looks like first, second, and fifth place is all really close. Oh, score updates. Okay. So, still, well, second through fifth place is all pretty close. Um, Luke Carrier, though, with that insane luck on that wind right there. I mean, that is just insane. 
that's what happens when you have wind. It's unpredictable. Weather's unpredictable. Even if you can predict it, it's still going to be different by the time you get to whatever time it was that it was predicted. I mean, that's been that's since day one. I ever first heard about weather. It's never, it's never been exactly the same. So, uh, how does the change of wind affect the decision to allow Keith Carley to fly his run later? Nick Edison asked. So basically, the wind is a variable that we can't control, right? So, like, let's let's just say, for instance, if let's say the wind completely flew in the other direction, right? Then we would fly from the other side of the runway. Um, and over, you know, we fly uh, about ten of these competitions per year, one every about six weeks in the flight sim. And I think they follow a very similar schedule to that in the real world, but it's the same as in the real world as it is in National East Bowl here. And uh, the wind is a variable that we cannot control. So the only thing we can do is, um, you know, some, someone like Pat who has a really good run and had really good winds, but not as good as uh, Luke, you can, uh, you know, hope next time that her wind is better than Luke's. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, there's nothing that we can do except for, like, fly in a vacuum. Uh, well, not a vacuum, but, uh, you know, like a skydiving chamber or something. But other than that, there's really nothing that we can do. So. And I think that's the fun of it. I think that's a lot of the fun of it. So, but um, coming up next, guys, first time ever, we have a spec class in National East Bowl. What is a spec class, you ask? Well, it is a class where we even the odds even more, okay? So every pilot is going to be flying the same plane. Now, I think we're going to have. The exhibition class before the spec class, I think the spec class will be last because it's brand new for us. So it's going to be the most exciting. So stick around, guys. Don't go anywhere yet. And make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on the YouTube. And hit that like button on the Twitch channel. And we will be right back here after these messages. Okay, guys, if you just saw that last commercial, that is Emerald Scenery Design's newest airstrip. It's out everywhere. It's out in the Microsoft PlayStation Store. It's out on all your third-party sites. That is one of my favorite places ever. It's beautiful. There's a bunch of places to land out there, and Emerald Scenery Designs has kind of rounded out his Alaska with that trip, so he's got a bunch of other strips out there. There's a ton of freeware on his website. Start with the freeware. Get a couple of those freewares, and while you're there, pick up a couple of the payware strips. And I'll tell you what, zoom in your Microsoft Flight Simulator, and start out, out, start heading north, end up at uh, 25 Mile Lake. You're having a great time. It's one of the most beautiful sceneries in the sim. And uh, so check it out at emeraldscenerydesign.com. All right, lining up. Now, I. We are going to do the spec class right now, okay? So the spec class is something brand new for National East Ole this year. We have, everybody's going to be flying this Lynn Savage Cub. Now this is a simulator plane. 
this is a uh, simulated plane that comes with the base sim. So everybody has this plane once they, if you have the sim, you have this plane, okay? So it's going to even out everything as much as possible. Everything that we can control is evened out. The fuel, the weights, and everything else. Except for, obviously, we can't control the wind. So Kat's going to have to start praying now. But uh, we're going to break this class down. We got NorCali, Red Baron, Kitty Cat, Pete C, and Frankie Poop. We have a couple people from England, three U.S. citizens, Kentucky, New York. <laughs> the wind is really, really blowing out here. If you can see, someone was trying to taxi right there. Now, again, guys, in the real world, they actually have what's called a wing walker or two wing walkers, right? And they're people that will walk alongside of the plane and physically hold on to the wing to keep the plane from blowing while they're taxiing in a crosswind or a tailwind. And they will help get you up to the line and then let you go. But we can't have that in the sim. We don't have the ability to do that yet until Parallel 42 miraculously creates something to do that. No, I'm just joking, Edson. Um, but it would be nice. Anyway, so we have the, the Selin Savage Cub spec class, and it looks like there's a little bit of model matching error here. So we're probably going to have to rely on a different, there we go. Okay. So guys, um, sometimes in the flight sim, there, there's what's called model matching, and it's a little bit, uh, something that happens once in a while, where the models won't actually show up as what the pilot is flying. So we're gonna try to switch to a different view here so we get the exact uh, plane. And what you're seeing here, this little cub with the small wheels is the actual plane that they're flying. How many people from the flight sim do we got out there watching? If you're a flight sim and you're loving this and you're enjoying this and having a great time, put a one in the chat if you're a flight simmer. If you're not a flight simmer, but you're a real life pilot, Put a number two in the chat. And we'll see how many people we got out here that are strictly from the flight sim and strictly from real aviation. Don't mix it. And then if you do both, put a three in the chat. Let's see, let's see what we got out there for viewers. Nor Cali J rocking the spec class, taking off. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow, okay. Okay. <laughs> A little scary in the beginning, but that's all right. He got it under control. Short takeoff from NorCali, as per usual. Nothing to see here. All right, lining up is Red Baron. Now, if you remember, Red Baron pulled the first group. Holy. And we're seeing almost 30 knot winds. We're seeing. 27 knot wind with gusts up to 32, 33, close to that. That's the Burstic special. All right, so we have Kitty Cat lining up. Now, if you guys have never been to a national East Hole competition before, um, this is a first for us. Okay, so we have what's called the spec class, and we're gonna we're gonna switch this up. Every competition, we're gonna have a different plane in the spec class. But what this does is it gives pilots a chance to keep uh, uh, to uh, keep things as close as possible, and just really rely on pilot skill, and then obviously the wind. So that way, they can go for season points in a plane that's exactly the same as everybody else's. Pete C, previously flying the Kip Fox. Now he's taken off in the Savage Cup. And it looks pretty standard here. It looks like everybody, I mean, this is what you get when you have, you know, when you equal it out like this, where all the planes are the same. And it's a little hard for these guys to taxi out here, but they're doing a great job of getting on the line. We got our we got our ground boss. In our air boss directing traffic here and so you know they're actually in just like it would be in real life they're in a in a channel where they're talking on radio 
and you know they're communicating through here in uh in t- uh, calling out times and everything like that so they're keeping these planes traffic just on point i mean every 30 seconds we're seeing a plane take off and uh no matter the wind almost 30 knots they're still able to get on that line and hold to their timing now i got a chance to um to get into one of the practices now i don't compete but i i joined in one of the practices last night and uh they let me uh they let me do the timing with them and it was like it felt really, really cool to um it, it it made it feel so realistic. Um like yeah, bush flying is great and stuff like that, but to get in and do the timing, like it puts like pressure. Um, it just makes it feel like you're like part of something. So if you guys want to join in on this, anybody's watching out there and you've never landed as short as this guy. I don't even know who this is. First name, last name, nor Cali. Or Cali Cali, number 22. Uh, first round takeoff is 18 in a very short landing. Didn't give up much. But if you guys are out there and you want to want to get into, um, even just to come hang out and join the conversation, maybe you don't want to compete. Maybe you want to uh, volunteer. Maybe you want to uh, just join in and hang out. Nationalschool.com slash chat. And we do have a scratch from Red Baron. I don't know if Red Baron scratched at all in the 170B. Maybe he had one. I think the winds are actually becoming a little more volatile now. I just saw a 27 knot wind at the beginning of this round. And now I'm looking at winds of 18 shooting up to 25. So we're, we're seeing quite a few gusts out here. The wind is definitely doing something different. Kitty cat coming in number 69. She's looking to claw back a little bit of that, uh, that uh, sting from that loss from the last round where she thought she was losing by two feet. And then all of a sudden was losing by 18 or 28. Cat is in a helicopter. Look at that. 25, 26 knots of gust right there. She was just, look at, she doesn't even have to try to pull the tail up. The wind just does it for her. All right, Pete C coming in. I really, really look at that. Look at how realistic that looks. That's insane. Oh, ah, it's a good thing. Is uh, is uh, landing rate was probably only negative 20 because the wind was just uh, keeping them. Uh, the wind was taking the wheel right there. So, Frankie Poop should be on final. Uh, by the way, guys, Frankie Frankie Poops is um, is doing uh, the gentleman's ride. Okay, so this is a charity for um. Uh, men's health and and uh he does it every year he's actually one of the top um the top uh what do you call it uh well he gets the most donations okay he's like number 11 in the world and like number two in new york or something like that like he really does a lot for this uh, charity and i think uh, men's mental health is yeah, all mental health is important but you know frankie's doing a gentleman's ride for men's mental health so if we can get that link i'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the chat if you guys want to, you can donate to that and help Frankie uh, help men's mental health. It's super important, and uh, he's he's really really proud of what he does with that. And so I told him, yeah, I'm gonna absolutely share that for you, Frankie. So Frankie, 36 coming in. Oh, oh my gosh! Have you ever seen a stall? With like maybe like a negative ten feet per minute landing rate. I mean, I don't even know if you could call it a stall. It was uh, it was pretty it was pretty soft. I think Frankie could have even been like sleeping and not woken up. That was so soft. The wind is really wild. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and look for this uh, look for this link really quick, and I'm gonna post it in the Twitch chat, and I'm gonna post it in the YouTube chat. So. And if you guys want to donate to that, even if it's only a dollar, five dollars, whatever, feel free to do that. As always, never feel obligated. But if you have the extra funds to do that and donate to Frankie's charity, it's uh, super important to him, super important to us. So check it out.
I'll send it to you. So I've got the link in the uh, in the Burstix TV chat. By the way, guys, Burstix TV chat. We got a raid from Miss T. Miss T. Really good to have that raid from you. Uh, Swazi Moth. Everybody out there. Airwolf. Chunky Flyer. Elbows in there. Flying Dive. Flying Dive. Hey, Flying Dive. What's going on, buddy? So, guys, I'm just taking a little second to uh, just taking a second to chat. Uh, we are live on YouTube and Twitch channel. So if you're wondering over on the YouTube, who's this guy talking to? I'm checking out the other chats. We got two different chats going. But we love you both the same. Wow, look at that. So I never really had a chance to fly this plane much in the flight simulator. But one of my viewers on the Twitch channel, while we were doing a national East Ole practice, said, hey, this plane is actually kind of decent. And so we decided we would check it out. And I got into it, and I was like, you know what? This is a lot of fun. So I think that's uh, part of how this, uh, this plane was chosen to do for the first uh, spec class. Another short takeoff. The wind is uh, starting to even out now. It's looking like it's hovering around 20 to 23 knots. For a minute there, we had some gusts varying all the way from 18 knots to up to 30 knots. I see Flights with Joel over there on the Twitch. Hello, Flights with Joel. Good to have you, man. Thank you for stopping in. Much appreciated. All right, so got another one on final here coming in for another landing. It looks like the scores we have up right now, NorCali uh, at 28. So NorCali might take this one with 28 in the lead so far. We still have a few more rounds left. NorCali's coming in. He's going to try to beat himself. And... And uh, NorCali is very skilled. I watch him fly a lot. He's very skilled. Oh, my gosh. You could not get closer. Oh, and he just, just misses the line just before the line. Scratch, but that's really, really great. Uh, going up and down there and uh, playing, with, uh, playing with fire there, hitting the ground. I mean, obviously, it was a scratch, but, geez, I mean, couldn't have been closer to actually making it. So when wind is this gusty, right, um, it's going, like a, like I'm looking here, 18 knots, I'm seeing 25, and this is all in a matter of seconds. I'm watching live wind here. With wind this gusty, you can hold your altitude, but when the wind drops out, when you're going from 24 knots to 18 knots, that's going to drop the plane. And so when you're that close to the ground, you're really playing with fire. Um, I wonder if it might be even... I wonder if it might be smart to try to uh, come in instead of holding low to the ground and trying to stay parallel. I wonder if it might be good to, to drop it in kind of like Justin Fisdale does with his 750 in the real world. Which I got a chance to talk to Justin Fisdale not too long ago when we were working on the 701. Um, we we uh, Justin helped us uh, with some numbers from the real world from National School, and then Justin uh, to kind of get the 701 more realistic to life. And uh, he was telling me that he comes in on, you know, maybe a 30 to 40 degree angle and drops altitude at about 300 feet per minute and then flares out at the end. So I wonder if it's disgusting, it might be better to try a drop-in type of landing. 
with about a 300 foot per minute, a negative 300 foot per minute uh, ascent. Uh, thank you for the follow over on the Twitch stream to a Redeemer. And I'm doing good, sir. I'm doing good. Another scratch. Now, this is very, very difficult to do here, guys. Very difficult when the wind, it, you know, for the first half of the event, the wind was pretty steady, but it's really, really starting to whip around now. Now, I can't hit every single comment in chat because I'm watching too many chats, too many things at once here to try to keep this broadcast the best of hand for everybody. But I do want to say to the YouTube and to the Twitch, to everywhere else that we're live at, appreciate every single one of you guys for being here. You guys are what make this possible. You guys coming back and watching and cheering on your favorite pilots. So let's hear it for your favorite pilots. Everybody, they can see the chat. They're all watching the live stream too. So when you're feeling cheering for your favorite pilot, you see that and it gets them pumped up and it makes them feel that much better. So please guys, if you have a favorite pilot, shout them out in the chat. Tell them you love them. Tell them whatever. Uh, we have a tied score for first place, Cat and NorCali. Now these two, these two, I mean, you couldn't get any more competitive than these two. Um, you know, they both, they both, uh, you know, do a lot of flying. They both practice like madmen. They both stick to the plane that they fly. This plane is new for both of them, right? This is the first time that they've, they've ever practiced in this plane, I would imagine, because I mean, who's out here flying the Zlin Savage Cub every day when you have, you know, the carbon or other things like that. But when we regress a little bit, take it back to a stock plane and everybody's flying the same thing. Yeah, got, got Red Baron here taking off almost backwards. What is this? What are we, this is the quickest wind I've ever seen. And I, I don't even know, I'm not even sure if they've had winds this crazy at a, at a real cold competition before. I mean, we're getting lucky here today, guys. You guys are in for a treat with winds like this. Hey, what would we fly do? That's what I got to say. What would we fly daily do? I'm getting that cat booty. Oh, another great, oh my gosh, almost drops it onto the ground, but saves it. Cat blue flame, oh my God. Wow. So she might she might rip the reins from North Cali with that. Because they're still tied. And Red Baron's over here. He's only he's only thirty feet behind. And you gotta think. It looks like a lot, right? Like you're looking at North Cali and, and Cali, they look like they're sitting high up on the mountain, twenty eight tied. But Red Baron is sitting at a total score of fifty eight feet because of these crazy winds today. Fifty eight feet? I mean that's like 10 people long. 10 people long. 10 people laid on the ground, head to foot. That's like only 10 people long, and they're taking off and landing in this distance. That's insane. Who needs a runway? Not us. Not today. Hey, Swazimoth, shouting out for Cali out there. So I asked you guys to check out and shout out to your favorite uh, your favorite pilot and uh, they love to see that stuff guys they really do they, they put a lot into this and hopefully a lot of these guys are gonna get out and do stole in the real world I know I'm going to I just got to get my LSA oh who Spazimoth is rooting for North Cali and that's over on the Twitch now, let me check out the YouTube stream and see if we have got a switch uh, which here. I'm gonna check out the YouTube chat. See what you guys are talking about for your favorite pilots. Um, Red Baron. Oh no, this is NorCali. NorCali with a 14th to take off. Oh, he's he's going sideways. He's, oh my God! Oh. My. Okay, he hit the line, guys. Remember this this event this year, National Soul and National East Soul. If you hit the line does not count as a scratch. You have to get over the line. Now that's different than it was last year, different than it was in our previous bowl event. So the line does not count, and all the pilots know this. They all know this, so it's not like North Cali is, it's not like he doesn't know that. I mean, he's just out here paddling the wind. Uh, 
I mean, this is almost worse than than the Edmund Fitzgerald. Where's Where's Gordon Lightfoot when you need him? This thing is thing is going for you. All right, so I'm gonna try to get my YouTube chat squared away here because YouTube chat. I gotta make sure I'm seeing all comments. Okay, coming in, Kitty Cat, with a five foot takeoff. Cat is taking off and shorter than probably her height. And a, a shout out to everybody who's dual streaming it right now, hanging out in the YouTube chat. I see you guys. I see some of you guys in the YouTube chat and in the Twitch chat at the same time. The guy out there, you know, the guy and the gal out there double fisting the bush lights at the party. Appreciate you guys a lot for hanging out. All the developers today, by the way, guys. Oh, another nice landing cat. That might that might wipe the floor with Norcali's old core. No disrespect. Norcali's a killer. He's a cold, cold, calculated soul killer. Okay, it looks like Norcali went around. He wasn't happy with what he was seeing. His wind was was not making him feel safe so he went back around and that's what we require the pilots to do if they feel like they're going to have a bad landing just like in real life we want them to go around because our goal with this is to make it as realistic as possible and i mean we strive for that because we want our east Coast pilots just like you see these uh these i racing with nascar in the drifting you see these guys that do the simulator and they want to win races in real life that's what we want to do with this. Now, not everybody that flies in these events is trying to go on to the real world. There's some people with health limitations. There's some people that may only ever be able to fly in the sim. But some of them are also, you know, looking forward to going out and flying in real life, and they're getting the practice in here. Um, but I think it brings a great, uh, it looks like a little longer landing for Red Baron. Um, you know, and I think it brings a great mix because it's pretty cool. You know, pilots are awesome. Real world pilots. I don't think I've ever met a real real world pilot. I'm sure, there's some out there, but I don't think I've ever met a real world pilot that was uh, that was rude or or uh, you know didn't want to talk to me because I was a simmer or something like that. Like everybody was super welcoming when I went out this console. Um, I had a great time, and uh, and I think that's what the big thing about this competition is bringing those two worlds together and you know getting these people that may never fly maybe we can get them a ride up in a plane or something like that you know i think Pat wants to uh come over from england and take a ride with uh justin or somebody i probably just because cat loves the zenith so you know justin flies the zenith cat probably wants to go for a ride with justin we'll see if we can hook that up for cat when she comes over next year okay so let's talk some scores here we got kitty cat she did end up taking out NorCali. It looks like five takeoff, five foot takeoff and a nine foot landing for Cat going out 14 for her best run. NorCali with 13 takeoff and a 10 foot landing, eight feet all together. And Red Baron, it seems like he's way in the back. Guys, he's only at 58 feet total. 58 feet total. I mean, that is just, it's insane. Um, so this this class uh, this pet class is brought to you by Flying Fries. Okay, if you guys remember the Scrapyard Monster, Flying Fries somehow was able to ask the Scrapyard Monster with the Howard Hughes XF11. Right now, currently the Burst TV stream, my stream is on a world tour. Every Tuesday, we take and do about uh, 500 miles or so, and then we put uh, we have a and we land somewhere, we put a new postcard on our plane. So the, the XF-11, my livery is looking pretty cool. It's got a bunch of postcards on it. So if you guys want to join in on that flight with us, um, pick up the XF-11, uh, Microsoft Flight from Store or wherever, and, uh, and you know, you can get it on all the third-party sites in the Microsoft Flight Sim Store. Pick it up and come fly with us on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we're going to have to do a little commercial here for the XF-11. Um, and so, guys, the exhibition class is coming up, 
and I just noticed I'm on the screen without my hat on. Okay, guys, I took all my hair. Uh, anyway, guys, we're gonna go to the exhibition class next, and I think we're gonna see. Uh, I think Keith was able to get back in, so he's gonna he's gonna run his round from earlier. And uh, you guys are awesome. We'll see you back here in a second. Thank you for coming in and hanging out with National East Coast. Don't go anywhere just yet. We got more action coming. It's Trent. Fly low, don't die. Flight Simulator Marketplace on PC and Xbox. He was a famous jumping man from the Chicago way. He had a boogie style that no one else could play. He was a top man at his craft. But then his number came up and he was gone with the draft. He's in the army now, a blowing reveille. He's the boogie boogie bugle boy of Company B. They made him blow a bugle for his Uncle Sam. It really brought him down because he couldn't chant. The captain seemed to understand. Because the next day the cap went out and drafted a fan. And now the company jumps when he plays reveille. He's the boogie boogie bugle boy of Company B. A root, a toot, a tootly on a toot. He blows an eight to the bar. In boogie rhythm, you can't blow.
right, guys, we are back. And check out those commercials. How cool is that to get to see developers from the Flight Sim live on TV, on a broadcast, getting their names out there. I love it, man. Parallel 42, Glying Fries, Hangar Studios, and Emerald Scenery Designs, all wonderful developers. And uh, you guys got to check out their websites. And I'll make sure to uh, post those websites. You can also find their links around the scenery here. QR codes that are on the uh, billboards, they actually work. By the way, if any of you guys are going to be at Flight Sim Expo, National e Stole, along with National Stole, will be at Flight Sim Expo. We're going to have a live competition there. So Saturday, we're going to try to do uh, you know more of an open qualifier and get some people qualified up, and then maybe we'll even do uh, head-to-head on Sunday. Who knows? But we're going to have a competition on Sunday. So please stop by and say hello. We'd love to meet you guys at Flight Sim Expo. And uh, really, really excited to go and meet everybody at Flight Sim Expo. This class here, exhibition class, presented by Got Friends, who will be right next to at Flight Sim Expo. We have Cat Blue Flame from Great Britain. 1949 of AN2. Love this plane. It is uh, it's one of the uh, Microsoft uh, like partner planes. I guess it's only like 15 bucks or something like that. Um, nice little plane. We have a Kodiak here as well. And I think that is Riley Wilson in the Kodiak. And after the Kodiak, we have Keith Charlet. Now remember, Keith is actually from touring class. He's not actually participating in the exhibition class, although he is flying with the exhibition class. He had some issues getting his sim working earlier, but now he's back. And he's ready to rock. And this is a first time ever that we'll see the beaver in action. And yeah, I don't know if we've had a Kodiak or not. Maybe we did at our very first event. Got the motorhead. Motorhead livery on the Kodiak. We got Cat gearing up. It's a great takeoff from that AN2 old uh, Russian biplane. Sounds very good. Uh, the motorhead livery on the Kodiak. Um, actually, it is the Safari Wings. Safari Wings livery. He just wanted to show off his livery a little bit, so he's uh, he's he's going by. But he can go ahead and push back. Actually, he better listen to the to the ground boss, because I don't know what the ground boss is going to tell him. He says, "I'll just take the extra footage." Listen to that turbo prop. Now, so exhibition is just one of those classes to show off planes that don't really fit in any um, any classes that are you know solidified in this whole world at this point. Now, maybe someday we'll have a full class of turbo props, but at this point, uh, exhibition class is really just for those people that want to show off a certain plane. Um, maybe maybe a developer has a new plane that they want to show off and they have uh, a pilot fly that or something like that. So that's really what the exhibition class is, just for kind of showing off, doing doing something crazy out of the ordinary. Now, except for Keith. Now, Keith is in the Beaver. And this is uh, the Beaver here is not just the regular old Sim Beaver. This Beaver has um, some modifications done I got friends. That modification is a freeware that you can get it at dot, uh, excuse me, got dash friends.com slash Burstix. Don't forget to use Burstix at checkout. That is my partner code for the Twitch stream there. All right, so coming in is Cat Blue Flame. Got friends sponsoring the exhibition class. We 
see Flight Sim Association popping up there. If you guys don't know what Flight Sim Association is, check out FlightSimAssociation.com. They are the people who put on Flight Sim Expo. So I've recently become acquainted with uh, the two the uh, guys that run Flight Sim Association. Really, really two great guys. And it's been a pleasure to work with them so far. I hope to see all of you guys at Flight Sim Expo. I know not everybody's going to be able to make it, but I want to meet as many people as possible. I actually did get to meet a couple of my tours at the Swamp Pickle competition because they came out to do some long here um, and just hang out. And actually, one of them is competing right now in the Beaver. I got to meet the person that's, uh, I got to meet the person playing the Beaver in this round at the uh, uh, Swamp Pickle competition. Keith Charlet, Autos Dragon. He actually had a really cool shirt on. He had a shirt that he had uh, made up, and it was a, a Autos Dragon East Bowl shirt. And I'm like, no way, dude! That's so cool. I want to get me a Burst TV East Bowl shirt, but I I don't compete, so I have to like I have to get like a Cats shirt or like North Valley shirt or something. Listen to that, I hear Kodiak 100 coming in. Riley Wilson is the pilot of this plane. AKA Buffs. Come again. Someone in the chat mentioned that they wish they could go to FS Expo. You know, I know it's probably not easy for everybody to get to FS Expo, um, but I tell you what, it's going to be my first time and I'm super, super excited for it. Um, but you know what? You can always start saving now for next year, or start buying, uh, you know, lottery tickets. You get scratch off or something. No, I don't condone that. But um, you know, start saving up this year. You can out there next year. But I wish everybody could go. You know, it's. Uh, I think a lot of it is just travel. You know, but uh, I think I'm gonna start saving up like after. Expo, I'm just going to start saving up for the next year because I'm sure it's going to be a blast. I've heard from so many people that have been out to Flight Sim Expo, and Keith Carley a little long on the landing there. Now, remember, guys, he is not competing in the exhibition class. He is just a guest to the exhibition class. They're allowing him to fly and make the lost time because he wasn't able to connect earlier. He had some plane problems. He let the air out of his tires. Um, but I have heard from so many people that have had a good time at Flight Sim Expo. Um, like a lot, of, a lot of different Twitch streamers, um, some developers that have been out there before that have told me great stories about it. Uh, I'm super excited to go. I heard a lot about it from Order Learn to Fly. Uh, Order Learn to Fly told me that you know you won't believe it, but you'll go to Flight Sim Expo and people will actually like know who you are, and you'll you'll just be mind blown that you know a Twitch streamer and they know who you are and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't know about me. <laughs> but Order's kind of iconic. I've been streaming for a long time. Uh, Pat Blue Flames lining up in the AN2. She's probably got her fans on inside of that cockpit because the fans do work in the AN90. And to, you know, get a little extra lift. You know, you could probably, uh, no, I'm just right there. Won't give me any extra lift, but it might help your psyche. Now this delivery is pretty interesting. So Kat is also a Twitch streamer and she just puts full hook. So let her take off and then we'll talk about Kat's delivery. Full flap, ripping that thing off the ground. Really, really nice take off. Let me imagine how heavy that plane actually is. So Kat does what's called the slow hold low and she flies from each competition. Or she'll fly from here to our next competition. Um, and basically, she, you know, she does it over time, over the six weeks or so on her stream. And she's even gone as far as measuring out the room in the back of that AN2 to be able to fit her 701 inside of it. Now, obviously, you can't really do that in the sim, but it's it's all about the imagination as far as it goes with Cat's Pro Hobo because, I mean, she really does do it as realistic as possible. So, Keith Charlie, take it off in the Beaver. It is a little long. Um, you know, 
think I think switch to the Beaver after the after the Wilga 80X was uh, removed. So we removed the Wilga 80X and replaced put the Wilga 80P in there. Um, you know the Wilga 80X in its class, uh, there was no beating it, right? So we had to do something. Um, we talked to all the pilots, and we decided we'd make the 80P instead of the 80X. Now the 80P is a little bit smaller of an engine, a little bit smaller tire. I think it really evens out the class a little more. Well, that way the 170Bs and all that have, have a little more of a hint. And so all the pilots, well, let's do that. Let's make it more fair. And that's how freaking cool our pilot group is. We have a really solid pilot group of 20, 25 people. They're always, always welcome to add new people into the group. So if you want to join, and maybe you just want to practice with us, maybe you just want to talk to the pilot, it doesn't matter. Come join the conversation. Nationalstoll.com slash pad. It looks like we might have some brake issues in the Kodiak. I'm not sure that the brakes were, uh, not sure that the brakes, now this could be from a plethora of different things because, you know, when you're in the flight simulator, you have, you know, different setups with the button. It could have been a button that was uh, a pound wrong or something like that. We never really know. Um, but it looks like we do have some brake issues with the Kodiak. That's brilliant. So she's got a nice headwind of 18. Don't ski any dust. She really is just taking full advantage of all four of those wings and just floating it in. She is, she is a stone cold ball killer. I mean, look at that. Barely gave up anything. Lands in less than a length of the plane. She really is good. She really is good. And I never doubted it. I never doubted that she was good. But Still amazing at what that can do, and she, she even says herself she doesn't even have the best sim gear. You know, she doesn't have uh, you know the five hundred dollar uh, you know Hodis or anything like that. You know, so she, she's just really all heart and soul and grit, and uh, that takes a lot of butt. Uh, Sawdust Dragon coming in. It looks like we have also a glitch with the chalks on that plane. Um, Sometimes that happens. You know what? We're working on getting all those glitches worked out. I swear, uh, you know, we're, we're getting them all squared away here. But I like it though. It has a little character, right? Keep flying around with cocks. We'll never we give up. I'm on the landing. Now remember, this is the first time flying the Beaver. And I don't think, you know, I we, we talked about this actually before the competition. And I don't think Keith ever thought, like, oh, I'm going to beat everybody in the 170 with the Beaver. I think Keith was just having a good time. I think he just liked that livery he made. He did such a darn good job on it. I think he just, uh, just went in the Beaver just to have fun with it, you know? And, you know, who, who I miss, actually, Midnight Rain. He used to fly the Comanche. Anybody remember Midnight Rain in the Comanche? He used to fly the Comanche in a touring class. He used to be always said, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to win. But... I'm having fun in it. So it. Looks like we got Cat B, 123 in the exhibition class, and then Riley Wilson was 723. And I, I wasn't big fish there, so it could have been a little lower, or it could have been a little shorter, but it wasn't big fish. We a green flag, the cat is off. The green flag means it's okay to go, she's okay to fly. Red flag, obviously. No, you're not okay to go, you're not okay to fly. This is the final lap. The final lap. White flag the final lap. Um, on the bottom of your screen there, you'll see the flight from association again. We put on the expo and, and put that whole thing together. All the different developers and uh, of sim and uh, you know from flight sim computer to uh, planes to sceneries, all kinds of stuff. So it's a lot of fun. Or at least so I hear. This will be my first one, but I'm super excited. And a really good takeoff from Keith Charlet. Looks like we may have lost sound. And so we're going to switch switch uh, the view of Cat Soul Hobo. Uh, Cat's showing off a little bit. Like she knows she's on camera. Or maybe she's just really good at following the pattern that's expected. I don't know, though. I think Cat might be showing off a little bit on the underside of the A and two. Um okay so oh is it have I been staying possibly this whole time and been brown dog in the computer? Yeah.
Okay, so I oh okay, never mind. So so don't confuse there. I'm actually looking at the wrong scoreboard. Brown dog is still in the lead in the touring class. So if you remember right, way back about an hour and a half ago or so, Brown Dog a uh, 184 score in the Wilga. It's the first time ever competing. I know we had a bunch of hype in the chat for Brown Dog. Brown Dog brought people to the chat here on. If you're still out there for Brown Dog, make sure you say hello in the chat. Let them know you're still here. He still has a chance to get knocked out by Keith and the Beaver. Now this cat's final landing. If you take a look at her livery there, she's got the, the USA map. And so she updates that livery every time she flies from one place to the other. Uh, kind of like the old, uh, like, heat bridge magnet, you know, but she's doing it on her, her plane there. But really cool. A lot of fun to, uh, if you ever get a chance to get into one of her flights where she flies from uh, East Bowl spot to East Bowl spot, uh, check it out. It's a good time. I think she's on Twitch at, at Blue Flame if you don't follow her. Definitely check her out. And very controlled flight, as always. That. Oh, was that a scratch? I don't know. I'm, you know, I have a couple different angles here, obviously from the broadcast, and it's not two angles. One angle looked like for sure scratch. The other angle looked like no, that wasn't a scratch. So that's why we leave that up, up to the real judges. I'm just here to speculate. Oh, it looks like we got Brown Dog audio in the chat from YouTube over there with the uh, hand waves. I imagine they're a fan of Brown Dog. Reed Re Dreamer on the YouTube chat. That's a nice point of view. Loving the turbine engine. And over on the Bristol TV channel, we have Brown Dog hyping up and see. Here, Wolf, we have Got Friends over in the chat. Navy on equals gold, it says Got Friends. A little dev on dev love. Got Friends shouting out to Hangar 713 with that beautiful L17 Navy on B. And we do have a scratch and a bit of a nose, a nose, uh, uh, nose over. It wasn't a full on nose over, he didn't quite flip. So, Keith, Charlay. Finishing up the touring class, and it looks like Brown Dog is going to hold on to the lead that he has held the entire day. Brown Dog with 184. He will take the touring class. And a good try from Keith Charlay. I think, like I said, I talked to Keith before the event. I don't think he ever, you know, thought, hey, I'm going to be super, super competitive in the Beaver. I think he's just having a good time in that thing. You know, and Keith is a good time. I got to meet him up over at Swamp Stole. Um, and I know he's all about having a good time. Uh, so Brown Dog will take that class. Now the exhibition class between Cat and Riley Wilson. Cat with a 64 foot takeoff for the best takeoff and the best landing of 29 feet with a 93 foot best run. Riley Wilson in 2023 at her Kodiak 100. And best takeoff for that was 309 and best landing was 414 with a 723 feet total takeoff. Next up, the helicopter class. <laughs> I'm just joking. We don't allow helicopters in Seoul. We can't. I mean, I mean, I guess if we consider Pat a helicopter, but I mean, um, no. But anyway, congrats, congrats to all of our pilots that uh, that practiced for the last six weeks to get in here. They uh, they really do a good job. All the people that do the video work. I mean, we have drone operators. We have scenery creators. We have crown bosses, air bosses, judges. I mean, this is a this is a huge operation. It's not just Burst TV. It's not just National Stole. It's, it's a mixture of National Stole, Burst TV, and every single person that comes out and volunteers their time to help out. So, as you can see, going across the screen there, all the people up there are always uh, much appreciated. So that is going to round out all the classes. Uh, I want to say thank you to all the sponsors. We have Parallel 42. Check them out at parallel42.com. We have Hangar Studios 713. Check them out at hangarstudios713.com. We have Got Friends. Check them out at got friends slash burstix. Uh, got friends.com slash burstix. Use code burstix at checkout. And, uh, and Flying Fries. Flying Fries with the XF11. So a couple new releases. Um, Emerald 
scenery design at com. Check out the beautiful scenery that you saw up on the commercial there. So out of all the new stuff, we got the L17B, the XF11. Go check those out. Go check out Got Friends and Parallel 42, Emerald Scenery Design, everybody. And what a great time today. Appreciate you guys I'll be back in another six weeks or so for another competition. You guys are awesome. In three weeks, by the way, guys, don't forget about this. If you guys are close to uh, Virginia Beach, like, I don't know, Vinny drove only like seven hours to the Swamp Stole. So, I mean, you have no excuse if you're if you're closer than seven hours. So, if you're close, Virginia Beach, Heritage Stole, okay? It would be, um, just go to nationalstole.com slash chat or nationalstole.com to get the information on it. But it's going to be, Heritage Stole is actually at a, um, a, a flight museum, aviation museum. There's a lot of awesome stuff. You get a stole competition. You get an aviation museum. There's warbird. You're going to have a great time doing two different things at once. So if you guys are, you know, within seven hours, I mean, when you drove it, so you can do it. Too. If you're close enough, go out to uh, 42 VA, 42 Victor Alpha, and uh, check out here at Stole. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. I really had a good time with you guys. Much love. Peace out, guys. We'll see you on the next one.